Hello guys, in this video, we are going to discuss the solution of the problem split an array into two equal sum subarrays. So let us look at the problem statement. The problem statement says given an array of integer arr, return true if it is possible to split it into two subarrays without reordering the element such that the sum of two subarrays are equal. If it is not possible, then return false. So for instance, if this is the subarray which is given to us, it is possible to split this array into two parts, first part containing element 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the second part containing element 5 and 5 and the sum of these two parts are equal because of which we are returning true. If it is not possible to split the array into two equal parts, then we are going to return false. So that's about the problem statement folks. Now let us discuss the solution of this problem. So in order to discuss the solution of this problem, let us take an example. So let us say this is the array which is given to us. We are going to take two variables, sum1 and sum2, and sum1 initially is equals to 0. Similarly, sum2 initially is equals to 0. And then we are going to set two pointers over here, a pointer at the beginning of the array and the pointer at the end of the array. So let us say this is my pointer i and this is my pointer j. So the general idea behind solving this problem is to compute sum1 and sum2 where s1 is equal to sum of all elements from 0 to ith element. Similarly, s2 is sum of all elements from jth to n-1th element. So once we have computed this, towards the end all we have to do is we need to check if S1 is equals to S2 and that is what we are going to return. If S1 is equals to S2, then we are going to return true. Otherwise, we are going to return false. So that's the general idea behind solving this problem, folks. Now let us discuss it through an example. So to begin with, we have S1, S2, I and J variables with us. Now, the first thing which we are going to check over here is we are going to check so this is my first case. We are going to check if S1 is equals equals to S2. In this case, S1 and S2 are equal because of which we can update both our S1 and S2. So the S1 will be updated by S1 plus ARR i. Similarly, S2 will be updated by S2 plus ARR j. And once we have updated our S1 and S2, we are going to update our i and j as well. So in this case, i will be equals to i plus 1 and j will be equals to j minus 1. And this is our first case. And after doing that, let us update our i and j pointer. So now i will be over here and j will be over here. And the value of S2 is 5 and the value of S1 is 1. In the second condition, we are going to check if S1 is less than S2, which is the case over here. S1 is less than S2. Then in such case, in order for S1 to be equals to S2, we need to add some element to S1. And that is what we are going to do. So if S1 is less than S2, in such cases, all we have to do is we have to increase S1 by ARI and then we have to increase our ith pointer. So let us look at the updated values. So i will be updated to this position and the sum will be increased by i. So now the sum becomes equals to 3 which is 1 plus 2. Now let us proceed forward. Again we compare s1 and s2 and s1 is again less than s2 because of which we add 3 to the current value of s1. So this value becomes equals to 6. i comes over here and j remains at his original position. Now at this point, we realize that S1 is greater than S2 and that brings us to our third case where this is an else case. Here, S1 is greater than S2. In such case, all we have to do is we need to increase S2 by ARRJ and, J, and then decrease J by 1. So let us do that. So as we can see here, J will come to this position and this s2 will be increased by j so now s1 becomes equals to 6 and s2 is equals to 10 and we will execute these three cases while i is less than j 
and as we can see i and j are equal now at this point i is equals to j and that is equals to 3 now with this info let us see how we will be able to compute whether s1 can be made equals to s2 now as you can see we have taken all the elements except this element this element we have not divided it yet whether this element will go into s1 or s2 is something which we have not divided so for such cases all we have to do is we have to check whether s1 plus arri equals equals to s2 or it might also be possible that s1 is equals equals to s2 plus arri if either of these two conditions matches we are going to return true otherwise we can return false so as you can see s1 is equals to 6 and arri equals to 4 and s2 is already equals to 10 and if you compute this 10 equals equals to 10 and because of which we can return true for this case so that's the discussion of solution folks now let us discuss the pseudocode of this problem so let us say we want to check whether arr can be divided and an array is given to us so the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to check the size of arr if the size of arr equals equals to 1 then in such case it is not possible to divide the array into two parts because the array itself contains just one element because of which we can return false otherwise we are going to take our pointers which is s1 equals to s2 equals to 0 and i equals to 0 and j is equals to len of array minus 1 now we are going to iterate on the array while i is less than j and then the three cases which we have discussed which is if s1 equals equals to s2 then in such case s1 can be increased by arri and s2 can be increased by arrj and i and j can be increased so i will be i plus plus and j will be j minus minus if s1 is not equals to s2 then let us check if s1 is greater than s2 if s1 is greater than s2 then that simply means s2 is smaller and then s2 has to be increased because of which s2 will be increased by arrj and j will be decremented otherwise if s1 is smaller then s1 has to be increased by arri and then i can be increased by 1 so i equals to i plus 1 and in this way we will be able to check whether we are able to divide the array into two parts or not now towards the end it might be possible that i equals equals to j the condition which we have discussed in the example so here so this condition i am talking about i and j are equal and this third element is something which we have not used so far so the third element over here was this fourth element which we have not used so far so in such case we will check if i equals equals to j and if let us say s1 is already equals to s2 then in such case by taking that last element which is ith or jth element if we either add to s1 or s2 then s1 will differ from s2 because of which we are going to return false let me explain it one more time so in this condition we know that ith element is not used and without using ith element s1 and s2 are equal now either now the ith element will either go to s1 or s2 irrespective of the fact whether ith element goes to s1 or s2 by adding ith element to either s1 or s2 s1 cannot be made equals to s2 because of which we are returning false otherwise if s1 and s2 are not equal and ith element is to be used then we are going to check whether by adding the ith element to s1 this becomes equals to s2 or by adding the ith element to s2 s1 becomes equals to s2 if this is the case we are going to return true otherwise we are going to return false and in some cases it might also be possible that i is not equals to j so we have covered for the case 
where i is equals to j so we have covered for this case but it might also be possible that i is not equals to j in such case all we have to do is we have to compare whether s1 is equals equals to s2 if it is equal then we are going to return true otherwise we are going to return false so that's the entire pseudo code folks now let us see how we have implemented this in python and c++ so first let us look at the python implementation if length of array is 1 then we are going to return false otherwise i j sum 1 and sum 2 is what we are going to initialize and then we are going to iterate on the array while i is less than j if s sum 1 and sum 2 are equal then sum 1 and sum 2 both will be increased by i and j and then i and j will be updated if sum 1 is greater than sum 2 then in such case sum 2 has to be increased which is what we are doing over here and j will be decremented by 1 otherwise someone needs to be increased and someone will be increased by ith element and i will be increased by 1 and once we have computed someone and sum 2 then we are going to check whether i equals equals to j i equals equals to j simply means that ith element is yet to be used in such case if someone equals equals to sum 2 then we are returning false otherwise we are checking by adding ith element to either sum 1 or sum 2 someone can be made equals to sum 2 if it can be made equals to sum 2 then we are returning true otherwise we are returning false in the case where i is not equals to j all we have to do is we need to compare sum 1 and sum 2 so that's the python implementation folks now let us submit our solution so our python solution got accepted now let us look at our c++ solution so our c++ solution is also the same folks first we are checking whether the length of array is 1 if it is 1 we are returning false otherwise sum 1 sum 2 i and j elements are initialized then we are iterating on the array while i is less than j we are checking if sum 1 is equals to sum 2 if it is equal then sum 1 and sum 2 both will be increased and i and j will be increased and decreased otherwise if sum 1 is greater than sum 2 then sum 2 has to be increased and j has to be decreased otherwise sum 1 has to be increased and and i has to be decreased towards the end we are checking if i and j are equal if i and j are equal then that simply means there is one element that has to be used if sum 1 and sum 2 are equal then return false otherwise by adding the ith element either to sum 1 or sum 2 we are checking whether it can be made equal if it can be made equal then we are returning true otherwise we are returning false if all elements have been used then in such case i will not be equals to j in that case all we have to do is we have to check whether sum 1 equals equals to sum 2 if it is equal then return true otherwise return false so that's the c++ implementation folks now let us submit our solution so our c++ implementation also got accepted that is all from this video folks in case if you have any question or comment regarding this video please feel free to use the comment section and i'll try to address them thank you